Please welcome Mr. Doug Cobb, our Master of Ceremonies for this year's Kentucky Entrepreneur Hall of Fame induction celebration. Hello again. Don't you think we should thank the people who served us and uh, cooked for us tonight? I always look forward to this event. This is a great celebration of entrepreneurship and entrepreneurs in Kentucky, some of the most successful entrepreneurs in the history of our state. The mission is to raise awareness of the importance of entrepreneurship and to hopefully attract a few more people into it when they hear stories of how some of the crazy things some of us have tried have worked that maybe they'll want to give it a try as well. That's what we're here for tonight. I'd like to welcome a few dignitaries that are with us here tonight. First, I haven't seen him, but I am told that former Governor John Y. Brown is here. Is the governor here? Governor? Uh, and Ambassador Kelly Kraft is here, the former U.S. Ambassador to the United Nations and to Canada. Ambassador Kraft. We also have the presidents. Now, this is a very fraught thing I'm about to do, the order in which I do this. We have the presidents of the University of Kentucky and the University of Louisville here. I, I know where I am. Please. Uh, Welcome Dr. Eli uh, Capaluto and Dr. Neely Bindapudi. <laughs> this evening would not be possible without the generous support of our sponsors, our silver and gold sponsors. You can see their names on the screen there. Would you join me in thanking them for making this possible tonight? I'd also like to thank our platinum sponsor, Trilogy Health Services. Yes, thank you. And our presenting sponsor, J.P. Morgan Chase. We're really thankful for their sponsorship. So is this going to be this kind of crowd tonight where everybody's going to, some of you are going to have a chance to cheer a little bit later. Um, I get to see Paul Costell once a year. When, when we come to this banquet every time. Paul, it's great to see you again. Paul is the uh, uh, regional manager uh, for Kentucky of J.P. Morgan Chase. He's 30 years in the banking business in Kentucky and a major civic leader in our community in the Louisville and the Kentucky area. Paul, would you come up and say a few words for us? So, Doug, I have one question for you. Can I not wear a tie next year? Is that okay? Uh, exactly. Exactly. No, Doug, thank you for hosting. Thank you for your entrepreneur efforts throughout the years. Uh, I'd also like to thank the Kentucky Chamber for putting on this event, specifically Ashley Watts, Jim Ford, and Andrea Flanders. It's a great event. We're, uh, it, yeah, absolutely. You know, J.P. Morgan Chase uh, firmly believes in the spirit of entrepreneurship. It really is what makes our country great. The drive, the persistence, the creativity, the innovation of entrepreneurs is really something to behold. And we think about who creates the jobs in our country. It's, it's small businesses. They create, I don't know what it is, uh, 70 to 80% of the new jobs every year. And Everybody started out small, they, they fought the odds. And sometime, I'm not sure, but maybe Pat will tell us, uh, I'm sure they faced struggles and defeats, but yet again, rose again. Um, so my colleagues are so excited, I have 30 of them with us tonight. I'd like to thank our leaders in Lexington. I'd like to thank Kevin Sutphin. I'd like to thank Edward Quino and Morgan Busolacci. <laughs> So J.P. Morgan Chase is also fortunate to be able to work with these companies from the beginning um, to the maturation. We, we, we finance them when they're young. We provide treasury services for them. We're able to help them when they grow internationally. 
We're help them, we able to help them when they go public um, and anything in between. So it's with our pleasure that we sponsor this event and I can't wait to hear the stories tonight of our honorees. I look forward to it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Paul, and uh, thank you, J.P. Morgan Chase, for the, your generous support of this event. I also want to thank the friends of the Hall of Fame. That slide should be up. Would you read those names and join me in thanking them as well for their support? The um, Kentucky Chamber of Commerce has been, for a long time, a major partner in the Kentucky Hall of Fame, uh, Entrepreneurial Hall of Fame really uh, also an advocate, a champion for the importance of entrepreneurship in the state of Kentucky. It's my pleasure now to welcome to the platform Ashley Watts, who's the CEO of the Kentucky Chamber of Commerce. She's gonna bring us a few words. Please join me in welcoming Ashley. Thank you, Doug, and good evening, everyone. It is so great to see so many friendly and smiling faces and not behind a Zoom screen. So I'm so glad you guys could join us tonight. It is such an honor for the Kentucky Chamber to be included in this program, and we join in congratulating these successful job creators. Their willingness to take risks, to dream big, and to collaborate with those around them has resulted in growth throughout the Commonwealth and something we all can admire. Following tonight's induction, 48 individuals will be in the Hall of Fame. Many of these individuals have served on the Kentucky Chamber Board, and I can speak personally of their contributions to making Kentucky a better place to work and live. I would also like to thank my predecessor, Dave Atkinson, who is here tonight, who served as the president of the Kentucky Chamber for 14 years and helped create the partnership between the Hall of Fame and the Kentucky Chamber. Yes. <laughs> The Chamber advocates on behalf of businesses to create a better Kentucky, and these inductees have done exactly that. Our goal as your state chamber is to ensure that we create an environment that attracts and generates innovation, ideas, and the skilled workforce necessary to put these actions into item. And there has never been a better example of innovation, creativity, and true grit of Kentucky businesses than over the last year. As every business has had to adapt, change, ensure the safety of their customers, of their workers, of all Kentuckians, all while keeping our economy going. At this time, I would like to introduce one of those champions for innovation and one of the co-founders of this event, Brian Rainey. Brian is passionate about building an entrepreneurial community in Kentucky. He started and invested in several companies. Currently, he serves as CEO of APAC Software and CEO of Awesome Inc. Both APAC Software and Awesome Inc. help build the entrepreneurial community throughout Kentucky. His companies develop software, teach other people to develop software, and provide others with resources to launch and grow their own companies. Brian is a graduate of the University of Kentucky College of Engineering. After graduation, he passed up several lucrative software development jobs to pursue his passion of entrepreneurship here in the Commonwealth. He and his co-founders saw that the creation of the software company as an opportunity to grow the high-tech community here in Kentucky. 11 years later, Apex Software and Awesome Inc. have served hundreds of clients and have employed dozens of employees throughout Kentucky. Their purpose is to help others pursue their definition of awesome. Please join me in welcoming Brian Rainey. And he has props too. Thank you, Ashley, and thank you to the entire team at the Chamber. They are fantastic to work with. Um, let's give it up one more time to them for this outstanding event. So I want to talk to you today about our most important resource, which is our time. And the thing about your time is you can't get it back, so you don't want to waste it, and you can't get any more of it, so you should be really careful about how you spend it. And I saw this note a while ago from an elementary student. It says, from Delandra to Crystal, I'm breaking up with you. 
P.S. Happy one month anniversary, though. It's really hard to do this. Delander's not wasting his time anymore, though. He's going to make the hard choices and seize his third grade year. Or take a look at what Kyle and Ashley had to say to each other about how they plan out their time. It says, Dear Ashley, would you please be my girlfriend? I like you a lot. Please pick yes, no, or maybe. And Ashley's response, I'm sorry, I already have a boyfriend, Kyle, but when we break up, you're my next choice. <laughs> P.S. That will be in a month or two. This kid is uh, planning, out, planning out the next few months. I like it. Now, if I had to guess, we all started to have a new appreciation for our time over the last couple of years, hopefully valuing it more, wasting it less. One thing that I did with my time last year was I cleaned out my desk at Awesome Inc. for the very first time since we opened in 2009. And when I did that, I found a few things. First thing I found was a picture of my grandpa. And when I picked up this picture, it reminded me of his funeral. Now, growing up, my dad, he was a minister, so I went to a lot of events. And you know the thing that I learned to be the biggest difference between funerals and all the other events? It's that at funerals, people actually listen. And uh, people said a lot of nice things about my grandpa at his funeral. But looking at the picture that I found while cleaning out my desk, I realized that it it wasn't the things that people said about my grandpa that defined him. It's what he did with his time. And it wasn't his accomplishments that mattered. It's the impact that he had with those accomplishments that far outlived his life. You see, my grandpa, he impacted my dad. All my aunts and uncles impacted my grandma, impacted his grandkids, impacted me. Well, I impacted the, the work that I do, the, the way that I raise my family. The words I'm speaking tonight are likely in some part impacted by how my grandpa lived his life. And this picture, it represents the impact that we get to have with our time and on all the generations that are to come after us. The second thing I found on my desk was the original Awesome Inc. business plan. My business partners, who a couple of them are here tonight, Nick Such and, and Luke Murray, we wrote this business plan 12 years ago. So when I found it, I decided to, to read through it, and I learned that me and my business partners, we are exceptional fiction story writers. <laughs> There's not a whole lot that came true from this business plan. I mean, I think most entrepreneurs can probably say that about their business plan, but did you know there isn't a single reference to the Entrepreneur Hall of Fame in this plan? There's not a single mention of a book that we would write to tell the stories of the most successful entrepreneurs. No mention of a podcast series or a video series that would share the most exciting startup activities. And there's no mention of a coding school or a startup pitch contest. But what is in here is our why our purpose, to help people pursue their definition of awesome. And while this business plan, it was meant to represent where we thought we were going to be spending our time when we wrote it 12 years ago, the more important thing it represents is why we wanted to spend our time doing what we've been doing for the last 12 years. So I dug through some more things, and uh, I found this picture is a picture from the very first Kentucky Entrepreneur Hall of Fame ceremony in 2010. Some humble beginnings. Some of you, some of you were there that night. Not too many of you were there because there were only like 12 of us that were there that night. <clears throat> but we've inducted 44 entrepreneurs since that first ceremony. And some of them are, are in attendance here with us tonight. Some of them aren't with us anymore including the late Kent Taylor, who tragically passed away earlier this year. He would normally be here, and I'm wearing this cowboy hat so that a part of Kent Taylor's life could be represented. When we took this picture, we didn't realize that this event would grow to be a production of this size. But man, I remember 20 years ago, I remember Lee Todd talking about a day when entrepreneurship might be taken as seriously as UK basketball in this town. 
And I'm here to tell you that just down the road, there's a UK basketball game taking place. And however, in attendance tonight at an entrepreneurship event, we have the president of UK, we have one of the largest donors to UK athletics, we have the former provost of UK, we have a former UK basketball player, and they picked to be here. And so did all of you. So we're getting there, Lee. <laughs> but this picture, it represents how far you can come if you give it some time. The last thing I found on my desk that day was this wooden GoPro mount. I bought this from a young entrepreneur in 2015. His name is Logan Jones. He was a student of mine at UK, and he brought his creation into class one day to show it off to me. So I asked him, how much, how much does it cost? He quoted me $10. I'm pretty sure he made up that price right on the spot. <laughs> now, mind you, this is a hand-carved, fully assembled device. The parts alone had to cost at least $10. And on top of that, he was promising a custom engraved name stamp that he would put on it. I mean, this thing had to take Logan hours to make, and he was selling it for just $10. So like any good mentor, I decided to completely rip off my student that day, <laughs> and I bought it for $10. And I'm proud to inform you that Logan has developed into a high potential entrepreneur over the last few years. He started numerous businesses, and he's currently working on one of the most, uh, one of the most promising startups in Lexington. But this GoPro mount, it represents all the time that is yet to come for the future of entrepreneurship in our state. And that's a, that's a future that I'm proud to support. It's a future that many of the Hall of Fame inductees are actively supporting. It represents the real reason that the Hall of Fame exists, to help people pursue their definition of awesome and to help create more Hall of Fame entrepreneurs in our state. Now, I know this isn't a funeral, so I know you're probably not listening to all the words that I have to say, but if you only hear one thing tonight, I hope it's this truth. All of the entrepreneurs in this Hall of Fame, they will not be measured by the success of their business, but just like my grandpa, instead they will be remembered by how they spend their time and how they live their life. Their greatest influence, it won't be measured by their accomplishments, but by how they use their accomplishments to influence the world around them. And that goes for all of us. Whether you're an entrepreneur, an investor, a CEO, a teacher, a mom or a dad, our greatest impact will be made by the people that we pour into. I'm grateful for the entrepreneurs that have been inducted into this Hall of Fame and how much they pour into the people around them. I'm thankful for how intentional they are about having a positive impact in the world. And tonight, we get to add four more examples of entrepreneurs that have transformed the world in influential ways. So, to Pat, to Randy, Cal Turner Jr., to your father, Cal Turner Sr., I want to thank each of you for the example that you have been, the time that you've put in, and the sacrifices that you've made to help make Kentucky a better place to live and to work. So in an effort to make Kentucky a more viable place for entrepreneurship and a more viable path in Kentucky, let's celebrate the examples of entrepreneurship that are here tonight. At this time, I would like to ask all of the previous Kentucky Entrepreneur Hall of Fame inductees that are in attendance tonight to make their way to the stage over here to my left um, so that they can be recognized. And as they make their way to the stage, I would like to thank these entrepreneurs for the ways in which they use their accomplishments to further the Commonwealth of Kentucky. This group of successful entrepreneurs, they've taken risk and made sacrifices that have benefited our state. And not only that, but they're now willing to invest into future generations of entrepreneurs in our community. Many of these previous inductees, 
They've made a commitment to invest their time and their money into new businesses and entrepreneurs in Kentucky. With their financial support over the years, the Hall of Fame has been able to launch the fellowship program. And this program, led by Keith McMunn, has provided resources to assist 62 early stage entrepreneurs in their entrepreneurial journeys. These companies have raised over $73 million in outside funding, and they've created over 400 jobs for the state of Kentucky. The Hall of Fame inductees, they're sharing their stories and advice through a video series called the Founders Series and a book called The Unbridled Spirit. And I'm excited to announce that next year, with the support of many of these Hall of Fame inductees, we'll be launching a seed stage fund called the Awesome Fund to further invest into startups in our region. And all of this contributing to the second half of our mission, which is to encourage others to take risk and pursue similarly ambitious entrepreneurial endeavors. Before introducing the previous Kentucky Entrepreneur Hall of Fame in attendee, inductees that are in attendance tonight, I'd like to invite one of the co-founders of the Entrepreneur Hall of Fame to stage. Bobby Clark co-founded his first business at the University of Kentucky in 1981, UK Student Agencies. Bobby is currently co-founder of Midwest Clean Energy Enterprises, founder and president of Sustainable Business Ventures, and co-founder of the Kentucky Entrepreneur Network. Please welcome Bobby, everybody. <clears throat> the first inductee that I'd like to introduce to you is Lee Todd, Class of 2010, Projectron and Databeam. <clears throat> Jim Host, Class of 2010, Host Communications. John Y. Brown, Class of 2010, KFC. Dana Bowers, Class of 2011, iPay Technologies. Ron Geary, Class of 2012, ResCare. Billy Harper, Class of 2013, Harper Industries. Doug Cobb, Class of 2017, The Cobb Group. <laughs> Jess Carell, Class of 2018, First Southern National Bank. <laughs> Joe Kraft, Class of 2018, Alliance Research Partners. <laughs> Mike Davis, Class of 2019, Apris Inc. And Nate Morris, class of 2019, Rubicon Global. These are your previous Kentucky Entrepreneur Hall of Fame inductees. Speaking part tonight, I am pleased to introduce the proclamation by Andy Bashir, Governor of the Commonwealth of Kentucky. To all to whom these presents shall come, whereas the Kentucky Entrepreneur Hall of Fame event is being held on November 16th to celebrate the stories of Kentucky's most successful entrepreneurs. The celebration is in conjunction with the Global Entrepreneurship Week, which is the world's largest celebration of visionaries and job creators to inspire people everywhere to explore their potential as self-starters and innovators. And whereas the Kentucky Entrepreneur Hall of Fame is a physical, and virtual destination with a mission to raise awareness of the impact that entrepreneurship has made in the Commonwealth and to encourage others to pursue the similar ambitious endeavors. And whereas Kentucky strongly supports the culture of entrepreneurship and this entrepreneurial spirit stimulates the Commonwealth's overall economy, nearly 4,000 identified firms exported goods worth $31.5 billion from Kentucky in 2019. Of course, these exports, 78.6% of them, were generated by small businesses and startup companies. And whereas entrepreneurs and the small businesses are significant contributors to job creation in the state, in 2020, there were 3,700 new jobs created by startup businesses and entrepreneurial ventures in the Commonwealth, and more than 800 
new businesses ventures were launched throughout the state. And whereas Kentucky goal of expanding culture of entrepreneurship will be fully realized only if our youth continue to develop and expand their knowledge, skills, and attitudes about entrepreneurship. Now, ther therefore, I, Andy Bashir, Governor of the Commonwealth, do hereby proclaim November 16th is Entrepreneurship Day. Thank you. Thank you, Bobby, and thank you, Governor Bashir, for that. Before we introduce this year's inductees, we have uh, three or four awards that we want to give. The first of those is for the mentor of the year. This award is given to an outstanding individual who devotes time, talent, toward mentoring uh, and supporting the entrepreneurial community across the bluegrass. And I'm pleased to announce this year's Kentucky Entrepreneur Hall of Fame uh, Mentor of the Year Award. It goes to Eric Hartman. <laughs> Eric is the Associate Director for Commercialization at the University of Kentucky's Office of Technology Commercialization. He works with startups and entrepreneurs in the areas of ideation, lean startup principles, company formation, strategic planning, early stage dilutive and non-dilutive funding. He's additionally dedicated to growing a vibrant ecosystem to foster the success of uh, startups in Lexington. He previously served as the director of the Lexington office of the Kentucky Innovator Network. And prior to joining the University of Kentucky, he served as program director for the Kentucky SBIR STTR Matching Funds Program at the Kentucky Science and Technology Corporation. He received his bachelor's and master's degrees in electrical engineering and biomedical engineering, well, respectively, from the University of Kentucky. Very impressive. Congratulations on winning this year's Mentor of the Year Award. <laughs> engineering, it just gives me a chill just to think about it. I, I stayed away from any course that had a right answer on the quiz. I like compare and contrast. That was my... The second award is the 2001 Investor of the Year Award. Needless to say, investors are critically important to entrepreneurial success. This award is given to an influential individual who has demonstrated the ability to bring values to companies in the form of capital, experience, and leadership. And I'm pleased to announce that the 2021 Investor of the Year Award goes to Dan Beldy. Dan. Dan is a partner at Airwing Ventures, Canopy Ventures, and a co-founding partner of Power Plant Partners. He spent the last 25 years as a venture capitalist. He was a managing director at Steamboat Ventures, um, the venture capital affiliate of the Walt Disney Corporation, where he led the U.S. venture team. Prior to that, he was at Hummer Winblad Venture Partners. That's a big deal. Um, one of the very first venture firms to focus exclusively on software investments. He's been involved in a few companies you might have heard of, like GoPro, Edgecast, Playdom, Freewheel, acquired by Comcast, and Uplink, some very successful companies. He was a, an F-A-18 uh, fighter pilot, an instructor in the U.S. Navy, and he served with the Brazilian Navy during an exchange program. I'd love to hear that story. He has a, a B.S. in computer science with distinction from the Naval Academy, and an MBA from the Wharton School. Now listen to this, he has completed 290 plus carrier landings. He's delivered 25,000 plus copies of the New York Daily News. He's completed a triathlon at Alcatraz and a marathon in Antarctica. Any of those would be stories I'd love to sit and listen to. So congratulations, Dan, for being the 21, 2021 Kentucky Entrepreneur Investor of the Year. Next, I'd like to present our 2021 CEO of the Year Award. This award is given to an individual who has demonstrated the ability to bring growth to a company through strong leadership and extraordinary long-term 
vision. And I'm pleased uh, that this year's 2021 CEO of the year uh, will be Luther Deaton. He, Luther has served as the president and CEO of Central Bank and Trust since 1996. He was elected chairman, president, and CEO of Central Bank Shares in 2003. He began his career at Central Bank in 1978 as a teller in retail banking, and he progressed up through the lending department and was named executive vice president and head of commercial and retail banking in 1991. He's completed the Graduate School of Banking of the South, at Louisiana State University and the National Commercial Lending School at the University of Oklahoma. He was recently honored with the John Wooten, not Wooden, but Wooten Award, uh, and the Volunteer of the Year Award. He is a native of Jackson, Kentucky, and a resident of Nicholasville. Please join me in recognizing Luther as the 2021 Kentucky Entrepreneur CEO of the Year. At this time, it is my pleasure to invite a friend and a fellow Hall of Fame member, Dana Bowers, to the stage. She's going to recognize the 2021 Emerging Entrepreneur winners. Dana. Thank you, Doug, my friend. Um, so part of the mission of the Kentucky Entrepreneur Hall of Fame is to encourage future generations of entrepreneurs to pursue uh, endeavors similar to those achieved by the entrepreneurs that have been inducted into the Hall of Fame. The Emerging Entrepreneur Award recognizes up-and-coming entrepreneurs who are showing progress towards this goal. And so it is an honor to be able to introduce this year's Emerging Entrepreneurs. Our first Emerging Entrepreneur is Jeremiah Chapman. Jeremiah's passion for great tasting food and the people that cook it provided the motivation to create Fresh Fry and Fresh Fry Pod. Originally envisioning a career as a chef, Jeremiah received a master's degree in chemical engineering, cooking in a different way. As co-founder and CEO, his expertise includes nanotechnology. I want to make sure that I'm pronouncing this right. Is this supposed to say adsorption? Okay. And chemical manufacturing. I obviously don't know what adsorption is. Um, Waste is valuable. You just have to know how to look at it, says Mr. Chapman. The idea for Fresh Fry was born during, born during Chapman's sophomore year of college as a class project. An all-natural, easy-to-use frying oil filtering solution for restaurants to extend the flavor and the life of their oil while saving money and labor. During his stint as a process engineer at Zeochem, Jeremiah incorporated Fresh Fry in 2014 and then left to pursue Fresh Fry full-time as its CEO in 2016. Jeremiah was recognized by Forbes magazine's 30 Under 30 and holds a BS and master's degree in chemical engineering from the University of Louisville Speed School, graduating cum laude. He's obviously an underachiever. I, born and raised in Louisville, Jeremiah still calls Louisville home and lives with his wife and son. In his free time, he enjoys reading, fishing, and being active enough to support his love of cooking. So please, welcome Jeremiah. Well, um, I've been told that I need to explain adsorption, so I'll start with that. No, um, but seriously, when you are in the trenches every day, uh, it's really nice to just take a breath, look up, and realize that you have a tremendous amount of support, and I just want to say thank you. I want to thank you, uh, I mean, my co-founders here, Jacob over there, thank you. This is a picture. All right, we got that. Um, thank you to you know the community, uh, those who nominated me to be a part of this class, uh, those who support us in the community and also on the cap table. We are much appreciative of that as well. Um, and I also just want to take the time to say that when we get to sit up on a on a podium here, we always like to talk about what's important to us. 
And what we do at Fresh Fry is re redeploy waste to make a promising future. So the way, what we believe is that waste is just when someone says something is not valuable, they lack creativity and conviction. Last time I checked, Kentucky has neither of those things. Um, they don't have an issue of conviction. They don't have an issue of creativity. So we are proud to be in Kentucky. We're proud to be nominated here today. And this is just, this is a checkpoint. This is a checkpoint for us, so we are thankful, but there is more work to be done. Um, and alongside that work, I have to say that, uh, so we do extend the life of frying oil. Frying oil is increasing yet again. It's been up over 300%. I noticed some people who are in the Hall of Fame today, everyone knows someone who deals with the restaurant. Uh, so let's make sure that we uh, make those connections as well. So thank you. <laughs> Okay, our next emerging entrepreneur is Matt Dawson. <laughs> Dr. Matt Dawson has always uh, had a passion for solving problems through entrepreneurship, but he knew he wanted to be a doctor and help people since he was five years old. After his medical training, he founded um, a physical education business that resulted in national awards for education and innovation, authored two textbooks, published over 30 studies, created an app downloaded over 100,000 times, and a podcast downloaded over a million times. Where are all these underachievers coming from? <laughs> This is amazing. He also created a nonprofit that has trained thousands of physicians around the world. His local work includes purchasing the Kentucky Castle and turning it into an award-winning venue that has seen revenue growth of 12 times in less than four years. Most recently, he has started two businesses. Wild Labs now employs over 1,000 employees in Kentucky and has served the Commonwealth with COVID testing and grown to be a leader in COVID solutions. His primary role is CEO, CEO of Wild Health, a genomics-based precision medicine company, which has recently launched a national partnership with CrossFit called CrossFit Precision Care. His real passion is his amazing wife, Kristen, and his four children. So please welcome Dr. Matt to the stage. Brian, your, your words really spoke to me earlier about time. Uh, I spent a significant amount of my day today uh, crying with a friend of mine who lost his wife tragically in a car accident two days ago and they left behind three uh, young sons under 10 years old. Um, soon after spending the time with him, I was on a phone call with one of our partners uh, on a business call and I was informing them of another partnership that we had that was gonna be not great for this partner, but it was good for us. And he made the comment that I was the luckiest kid in the world. I knew that wasn't a compliment when you call someone a kid. And I also started to get a little defensive because he didn't say anything about hard work or good decisions, but lucky. But then when I thought about it for a second, I realized he's completely right. I was born in the greatest country in the world and the greatest state in the greatest country in the world. The two best people I've ever met or known happened to be my parents. In medical school, I met the most beautiful, perfect partner that I could ever meet, who's now my wife and the mother of my four kids. And I have the most amazing friends in the world, many of who are here. So I am the luckiest kid in the world, but I, what I would really encourage everyone here to realize is look around at who you have and what you have, understand how blessed and lucky you are, and then don't waste that, that time with them. Thank you for that, Brian, and thank you all for this. Thanks. Goodness. Our final emerging entrepreneur is Nick Mattingly. Nick is a, a live streaming and social video expert and leads the Switcher Studio team as CEO and co-founder. Since 2014, he's led the company to partnerships with Facebook Live, LinkedIn, Microsoft Stream, and beyond, and has garnered features in TechCrunch, USA Today, Inc. Magazine, and BBC. Moving forward, Nick's strategy and vision 
will help drive Switcher to become the video storytelling platform of choice for creative businesses and teams. Nick is also a member of the highly competitive Endeavor Entrepreneur Network. Unfortunately, Nick wasn't feeling um, very well this evening, and so he won't be able to be here to accept his award in person. So, Doug, I'm going to turn it back over to you. Thanks, everybody. Now, as they say, it's time for the feature presentation, the formal induction of the Hall of Fame Class of 20. 21. Our first inductee of the evening is Randall Buford. Buffer. <laughs> Randall Bufford. Please join me in learning a few things uh, about who Randall is. I hope. Randall Bufford is founder and chairman of Trilogy Health Services. Randall Bufford saw a need for a better way and with the heart of a servant leader, transformed that need into an enterprise valued at over $2 billion. As assisted living facilities started sprouting up in the mid 90s, Randy saw a need for a senior health community that would meet every need of an aging population. He started Trilogy Health Services in December of 1997 as one of the first full service senior living companies to combine independent living, assisted living, skilled nursing, memory care, and post-acute facilities on all the same property. Trilogy has now over 125 facilities and 15,000 employees across Kentucky, Ohio, Indiana, and Michigan, and continues to grow. Additionally, he started synergistic ancillary healthcare service companies that have grown to serve over 50,000 customers daily through synchrony rehabilitation operating in 165 locations and PCA Pharmacy with nine locations across eight states. Trilogy was the only senior living company to have been named to Glassdoor's 100 large employers in 2020. Randy also has the honor of being named one of Glassdoor's top 100 CEOs in the US in 2018 and 2019. Randy is a dedicated supporter and former trustee of the University of Louisville where he obtained a Bachelor of Science degree in commerce and accounting in 1981, and also served as head manager of U of L's 1980 national championship winning men's basketball team. In 2015, Randy was inducted into the university's College of Business Entrepreneurship Circle of Fame. Congratulations to Randall Bufford on his Kentucky Entrepreneur Hall of Fame induction. Now, okay, well, we've got two more videos. Now, before we get to hear from Randy, we want to look at two short videos uh, of introduction. This first one is from one of Randy's friends, a native Kentuckian. Broadway star, actress, and recording artist, Laura Bell Bundy. Hey everyone, fellow Kentuckian, Laura Bell Bundy here. Randy and all of the 2021 nominees, congratulations on being inducted into the Kentucky Entrepreneur Hall of Fame. Thank you for everything that you do and you have done for this great state. And the formal introduction for Randy tonight is Bill Sheriff. Uh, he's also going to be on video, but let me introduce him briefly. He built a fledgling niche business into a dominant corporate force not once but twice. After taking the reins of the family truck stop business at age 22, he expanded it and sold it nine years later to the Riders System, new national network of truck stops. He stayed, and under his leadership from 1975 to 1984, the Ryder Division grew to become the largest chain of corporate-owned and operated truck stops in the country. After Sohio acquired the trucking business in 1984, he made the transition to CEO of American Retirement Corporation and specialized in continuing care retirement communities. ARC went public in 1997, and nine years later, Brooks Senior Living acquired the company. Uh, Sheriff moved over as CEO following the transaction and 
Brookdale became the nation's largest operator of senior living communities. Please join me in watching Bill on the screen. He's going to introduce Randy. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It is my distinct honor and privilege this evening to introduce to you Randy Buffett. He is an incredible entrepreneur, brilliant mind, extraordinary discipline, attention to detail, and a constant pursuit of his model. But what stands out most about Randy and what he's accomplished is the incredible culture that he has built. It is the foundation of the success the trilogy has enjoyed. Over 127 communities today and 14,500 employees, they, they serve 11,000 residents. And probably no greater testament to the strength of that culture than how they have performed during this recent pandemic. It's simply incredible. It is now my pleasure to introduce to you my friend, Randy Buffett, the master of the masterpiece. Oh, picture first. Okay, this is amazing. And um, just so excited to be here. And, and just in context, of course, they're already betting out there when I'm going to start crying. So if you got the side bets, they're back there at the U of L table. They know who I am and so forth, but again, just honored to be here and humbled by this award, and to Doug, and you know, to Awesome Inc., and to the Chamber, what you're doing in entrepreneurship is needed, and we thank you very, very much for that, and uh, when I looked at those award winners on page three, and those that aren't with us, and the ones that came up, truly another separator, just to be in this type of group. Now, they told me I only had four minutes, and as Bill said, well, he's one of the rock stars right there, that gentleman. You know, I'm into details, so I'm going to keep it to four minutes. So I had to shortcut this a little bit, and I couldn't thank everybody, but at about 8 o'clock, unless my technology lets me down, I'm going to be tweeting out, and actually through my LinkedIn, if you want to go there later, some congratulations, because I view these awards, and actually I've not accepted awards like this in the past, because they are shared awards. They're not about me. It's about a team. And so because of that, go check that out because there's so many people and organizations that need this recognition this evening. And I want you to see them. And I did my best to get almost all of them on there uh, from every segment. And you might need a, mic a magnifying glass if you're on your cell phone to kind of do it so forth. So, but given my short time, how we roll at Trilogy is about three things. And we like things that come in three. And it's about faith and it's about family. And it's about the trilogy family. And we say that a lot. Now, first of all, for faith, Bill, Bill uh, talked to you a little bit about it. He said one time, and he was a mentor to me, he said, you know, Randy, he said, faith will see you through. And I've had those dark days. I've had those days when it just wasn't going to work. Okay? And I actually had a dark day one day. I was on the golf course, and I had a shot coming up. And the guy looked over me and said, hey, uh, this is for the match. You know, I'm out of this hole. Got pressure? I said, no, not really. He said, well, I'm looking at you. Don't look well. I said, yeah, I got a $500,000 payroll due on uh, Monday, and I don't have enough money in the bank. But well, let's focus on this shot first. <laughs> and we won the hole and won the match, which was a good thing. But faith does see you through. It does work. So the second is family. And we're all about family in our organization. It starts with that young lady right there. And without the support of Susan, none of this would have been possible. And I'm going to kind of look this way, because if I look at her, I'm going to start crying. <laughs> but think about support and faith of a lady through the ups and downs of startup. And we had them. We had the high notes. We had the low notes. And then she took care of our family. Okay, I was away. Travel, business. Better work-life balance these days for the young people that are coming up, but back in our day, you hit it. You hit it hard, and she took care of them. And you know, she always had this magical thing. She could sense the stress level rising, okay? And I'd come home, and there'd be the best 
the most awesome comfort food meal you have ever seen in your life, featuring unbelievable cooking, fried chicken, mashed potatoes. I'd be in a food coma, but the stress level would come way down. And again, she always had my back, okay, on anything, including, here you go for the entrepreneurial stories, I came home from work one night, and I'm having a business dispute with some investors who had gotten on the wrong side of right, and I'm a man of values. And I said, I can't partner with them anymore. I'm out. She goes, what do you mean? I said, we're going back to the office. And that young lady went with me, and we packed it up. She didn't say a word. She said, that's the right thing to do. If you believe that much, I got your back. And we still have those boxes in the basement. I'm like, you, who, you were talking, Brian, you cleaned your uh, office out. I had a bunch of crap in those boxes. Leave them in the basement. When I came back and we worked it out, it was all good. My office was much better. Now, they did tell me that when the uh, team came in the next morning and they saw my office was cleaned out, our administrative leader uh, looked out and said, what should we do? Went to the CFO. He came in and looked. He goes, ah, just cut, shut the door. We'll tell him he's in a meeting. So <laughs> forth. So anyway, that's Susan who's had my back. And then there's the Bufford men, David, John, and Clinton, uh, who are accomplished professionals, my children, but even better people. And again, continuing a Bufford family tradition, what I did with Susan, they outkicked their coverage. And so we actually have Rachel, Samantha, and Paige, as well as two grandsons, Hayden and Hunter, and Bo, who is on the way. So that's our family. Now, last but certainly not least is the Trilogy family, and that's how it rolls. In that order, that's our priority. But I can't tell you not the number of employees and our residents, but our family is a large universe to us of advisors, vendors, investors, and capital partners. And, you know, many of them have been with us for 20 years, okay, as we've grown as an organization, and they had faith as well. Because in the early years, we didn't have our act together as an employer. And if you were on the vendor side, you had a really tough time getting paid. And, but they always had faith in what we would do. And our success story here at Trilogy is all about these people. At the Trilogy family, at our family, because none of this would happen without them. So we are sharing this award with all of them. Now I hope, and I'll close with this, that you've heard one common word that's gone through all I've done for those budding entrepreneurs. Everything we do and everything we believe as an organization is about faith. Faith in our people, faith in ourselves, faith in our customer relationships, because that will see us through. Thank you very much. I'm honored for this recognition, and God bless you. And that was good. Our second inductee of the evening is Patrick R. Lancaster III. <laughs> Introducing Pat tonight will be his son, Jim, who is the CEO of Lantech. Before Lantech, Jim worked in the financial industry with Catalyst Energy in New York City. In 1990, he joined Lantech as a sales manager in the Custom Machinery Group, and after several promotions, he became president CEO in 1995. Jim also personally supports and advocates for technical vocational education in Louisville through his involvement as the board chairman of the Jefferson County Community and Technical College and with many other educational-related efforts. Please join me in welcoming Jim Lancaster, who will introduce us to his dad. Good evening. It's so wonderful to be here. I want to really start by thanking the sponsors and the chamber for this event and what it represents. Well, Pat, um, as the video showed, has a uh, name on so many patents and really invented all of the major innovations that came in stretch wrap over the last 50 years. I can't read. <laughs> um, 
you know, his inventions were not the main thing he brought to the entrepreneurial world. The thing about Pat is not only did he invent stretch wrapping, but he also brought a moral fiber to what he does that is incredible. That moral fiber still resides in our culture today. It makes a difference in how we treat each other, and it makes a difference in the way we act with our customers. Pat also is one of these folks that accomplishes what he sets out for. He has a will, and when he decides he's going in a direction, you do not want to get in his way. But when you combine that will with that moral fiber, and then you add in innovation, that's when you get success. And you can see it in the way our equipment's made. You can see it in the relationships we have with customers, the relationships with distributors. But probably the thing that I'm most proud of when I think of him is the number of people that he has mentored. He's mentored suppliers. He's mentored some people in this room. He's mentored customers. He's mentored employees. He's mentored neighbors. And most of all, he mentored his sons. And that's what allowed us to be successful. And so, Pat, it is with great honor that I introduce you to this entrepreneurial award. So we make no promise for no tears on me either. Thank you, Kentucky Chamber. This is a real honor, and I am so appreciative of what you do for Kentucky. You all might not know this, but after whiskey, horses, and fried chicken, Kentucky is the recognized world leader in stretch wrapping from Kentucky. <laughs> Uh, stretch wrapping, a uh, packaging and shipping revolution that you've kind of heard a little bit about, was invented in Kentucky. It changed the way products are successfully shipped all over the world. Just look up in Sam's or Costco or one of those uh, box stores at all those loads up on top, and that's what we do. Clearly, 1972 was not a great year to start a company. High unemployment, inflation at 8% on the way to 12%. Interest rates climbing to 20%. Natural gas prices going up. Race riots all over the country. Can you imagine? Sounds familiar. But without any technical degrees, my brother Bill and I, we built go-karts and snowmobiles in the early 50s, 25 years before they were ever marketed. Should have been in that business. We were comfortable with risk, and we were crazy dreamers. Both of us in our 20s, we had $3,000 and a dream to do it our way in the field of transport packaging. I was fresh from my experience with two large organizations, the United States Air Force and Mobile Oil, and I was pretty sure the techniques I had learned would not work for us now. Our initial sales came within a couple of weeks. There was an innovative infrared shrink system that we sold, uh, one to Dow Chemical and one to Shell uh, Oil. Without any money or facility to build these large systems, believe it or not, we enticed our customers into letting us build in their plant with their maintenance people. So we were able to convince them enough of our credibility, how I don't know, that they actually even gave us the cash to go buy all the parts. So my brother and I off in our Chevrolet with a big trailer, big box trailer on the back, designing as we drove, buying parts as we drove, we showed up back at Dow within a week, unloaded the parts, and went to work. Three weeks later, we flipped the switch, and guess what? It worked. Now our problem was we had to get some money. So I asked them, could we leave with a check for the full amount in a big company that is unheard of to take your money, maybe at home when you when you get your 
your uh, air conditioner fixed, they, they will take money. But here we had to get the money. So we walked through the accounting department of Dow Chemical at Hanging Rock. By the way, that plant's still there. And, and we left that day with that money. That took the $3,000 up to a much larger number. We did that two more times. We did it with Shell Oil and another company whose name escapes me for the moment. And, and with a great local bank, we now had cash. Off we went. Fast growth then happened. A year later, we developed the stretch wrap that you see, and that's become the core of our business. We have an almost unbelievable market share of over 50% for 50 years. Think about what that must mean in terms of some customer's assessment of our value. Many people have asked, how did you do that? We argue about that all the time. I think it's innovation, Jim thinks it's production, but who's gonna have that argument? <laughs> but there are three big keys that we found. Truly compelling value, I mean truly compelling value. If your value is high enough, customers will work with you in ways that you cannot believe. It sets up the necessary relationship and of trust and loyalty that causes a company like ours to be able to take off with the power that we did. The second thing, just down the street here is the, is the Toyota organization. We learned lean from Toyota. This gave us the method for uh, doing management, engineering, and production in an incredible way that yields us incredible productivity and on-time delivery with quality. Thank you, Toyota. And I don't know if anybody in here is from Toyota, but thank you for that concept. Third and most important, as others have said, the Lantec people. I just can't say enough about the Lantec people. From the very beginning, we had a culture where human success in values and relationship was celebrated over commercial success. Now, if you'll think about that for a moment, in so many organizations, commercial success comes first. You've heard from other speakers tonight, and I enjoyed it very much, how important that value system is in making a company grow. But my proudest achievement, successful leadership transition to the next generation. It sounds like one of our other uh, speakers is going to have a story on that as well. I transitioned my role as CEO to my son in 1995 when I was 55 years old, quite young, you might say. One of the reasons is he's far better CEO than me, and I became his employee. He let me do what I love the most, the freedom to continuously discover and develop solutions, meeting future customer needs, many of them before the customers even knew them. Jim is by far the best boss I have ever had. He gives me all the resources I need, and I love it. Thank you, Jim, for the support and resources to do what I do. And in conclusion, the Lancaster family, Lantec Associates, suppliers and customers, thank you for 50 years of confidence, trust, and support. Thank you. I love that story. You didn't have space, but somebody had space. You didn't have employees, but somebody had employees. You didn't have cash, but somebody had cash. The only thing you had to figure out was how to get it from them to you. And I think there's a great, that's a great entrepreneurial story. Our final inductee of the evening is actually a pair, a father-son pair, Cal Turner and Cal Turner Jr. Please join me in learning a bit more about the Turners. Cal Turner was co-founder and chairman emeritus of the Dollar General Corporation, and Cal Turner Jr. was former president of the Dollar General Corporation and chairman of the Cal Turner Family Foundation. In the small, wonderful town of Scottsville, Kentucky, in October of 1939, Cal Turner and his father Luther founded an unlikely-to-succeed enterprise, J.L. Turner and Son Wholesale Notions, Hosiery. Today, that successful company is well known as Dollar General Corporation a Fortune 200 company ranked 112. At the age of 25, Luther became the father of Cal Turner, the only one of three children of Josie and Luther Turner to survive. When Cal was 11 and had more education than his third grade educated father, he became integral to the family business enterprise and continued his education through his freshman year at Vanderbilt University, where his engineering classes did not sit well with him. Cal therefore did not tell his parents that his summer job 
with a Nashville, Tennessee wholesaler, was really a full-time position as an employee of the Neely Harwell Company, where his father, Luther Turner, was already an employee. Having endured the Great Depression and the reminders of the ever-present prospect of failure faced by all retailers, it's all the more remarkable that the Turners boldly founded a wholesale business in 1939. Two other examples of that courage were changing the wholesale company to a retail company after World War II and evolving the company into a new form of small town, small store retailing, Dollar General stores in 1955. In December of 1965, Cal Turner Jr. began his career at Dollar General. He succeeded his father as president in 1977 and as chairman in 1988. By the time of his retirement in 2003, he had grown the Dollar General into a New York Stock Exchange retailer with more than 6,000 stores in 27 states and an annual sales in excess of $6 billion. He helped set the company up for long-term success as the sales in 2020 were $27.8 billion. Together, Cal Turner and Cal Turner Jr. proved that if you understand and love your customers, your small stores can be your opportunity to help them have a better life by providing needed basics at low prices and friendly neighborhood stores. Congratulations to Cal Turner and Cal Turner Jr. on their Kentucky Entrepreneur Hall of Fame inductions. Introducing the Turners tonight will be Susan and Reverend Tom Eblen. Susan Eblen has worked in interior design throughout her life. She is Cal Jr.'s late wife, Margaret's sister. Reverend Tom Eblen is a retired ordained elder in the United Methodist Church, where he's pastored several congregations across Kentucky, as well as served in administrative roles and statewide responsibilities. Please join me in welcoming Tom and Susan, who will introduce the Turners. My mother and her family were residents of Scottsville and Allen County, so I grew up learning about Cal Turner Sr. and personally getting to know him and his family. There is so much that could be said, but let me highlight just a few things. Cal Turner Sr. was always a gentleman, and he was polite and mannerly, and treated others with respect. He had a charismatic personality. He never met a stranger. It was as easy for him to talk to a warehouse worker as it was to talk to any top company executive. Cal Sr. was always genuine, no pretense. What a person saw was what they got. People knew they could trust his word. He was very focused on building the business. He had a hunger for growth of the company, for opening more and more stores. And so the story goes. And it continues with Cal Turner Jr., who stepped right into the business footprints of his father and his grandfather dating back to the 1930s and their business ventures. I feel Cal has all the qualities of an entrepreneur. He was always, and still is, very creative and full of ideas on how to run the company, how to take the company to the next level. And not only did he have the ideas, but he had the boldness to make the decisions to make those changes, the necessary changes needed. And in a family business, uh, that's not always the most comfortable thing to do, and probably only Cal really knows Cal Jr. really knows how difficult many of those changes were. Um, I don't know if it's a requirement to get into this Hall of Fame to be generous, but Cal Turner Jr. has always had a spirit of generosity rooted in his deep faith in God, the giver of every good blessing. He constantly shares the fruits of his business ventures he helps meet the needs of his community. The arts community has benefited from him. Higher education endeavors, uh, needy throughout many communities. 
I think about the literacy program that Cal Jr. initiated with Dollar General and how many lives uh, have been changed by that literacy program. So it's our honor tonight to present to you uh, Mr. Cal Turner Jr. with fond thoughts of Cal Sr. I cannot tell you the love and joy I feel here tonight with you. I thank God for all of you. I feel the presence of the two primary entrepreneurs of my life. My Lord, who went out into the real world, and my Father, who embodied love. My Father never ceased to amaze and challenge me, especially since I knew that was not his agenda. He would incredibly make statements such as this, Cal Jr. is smarter than I am. What he proved in that statement was who was brilliant. That was he as a father who would say that about his son. And you could tell by the way he said it that he meant it. And having grown up Observing him very up close and personal. In fact, he gave me my last uh, promotion in a very up close and personal way. With the door closed between us, because he was on the other side of the door, sitting on the john, thinking. <laughs> that is up close <laughs> and personal. And he said, son, I have decided that it is time for you to be president of Dollar General so I can be chairman long enough. And the Wall Street Journal said about that, so much for corporate succession. That's the way you do it in Kentucky. Where you aspire
to be a part of the plan on earth of the real entrepreneur. I saw in my father the amazing love, love for our customers. And that was the missional tug at the company heart. And growing up, being honored to grow up in his home and the home of Laura Catherine Turner, who in her own right was an entrepreneur, I realize that the women in my life have modeled entrepreneurism in masterful, loving ways. Because to me, the highest value of the entrepreneur is love of others and love of the change you can be a part of. We're all here for a purpose of our God. He had something in mind. If you ever wonder whether you're a child of your parents or a child of your God, let me ask you this. At the moment of your conception, who do you think had you in mind? Each one of us is a unique, one-of-a-kind idea of God Almighty. And I learned that from my father, who said that he never had an original idea in his life. He said, I'm a Kentucky country boy. I just tried to watch what the city folks did. Well, in Kentucky, this wonderful place, and in Scottsville, Kentucky, the center of the universe, <laughs> and he felt sorry for anybody who didn't live in Scottsville making him the most generous person with his sympathy. There are a lot of people who don't live in Scottsville. <laughs> and he felt sorry for every one of them. But he loved the customer. I had a hard time at first loving the customer because I found many of them to be ugly, dirty, smelly. And I, but at the age of 13, I, on Saturday afternoon, on all day Saturday, not just the afternoon, clerked in a store, and I was a terrible clerk, a terrible clerk. So I got the worst customer, and I tried to help this ugly old dirty farmer buy a pair of 39 cent panties for the old lady. Okay, all right, let's, let's get on with this. It's just a sale of 39 cents. What size does she wear? I don't know. We have to know her size. Well, uh, uh, how big is she? Well, my Aunt Ethel, the best clerk in the store, and we had a store full of customers, was about to check out a customer. This is before self-service. She had all this merchandise. And he looked over and he said, she's about her size. So, you know the, the, the simple, logical answer Ethel, what size panties do you wear? <laughs> Ethel went, bloop, bloop, sounded like a turkey. And she threw her merchandise up. And 
it all landed on the floor and she went running to the stock room and I went running to the floor where she'd left all of that merchandise and made the best sale I ever made in my career of retailing by ringing up Ethel's merchandise and then I came back to this whole farm. And God said to me, look what's going on here. Look what's going on here. You are rich relative to that man. 39 cents for a pair of panties is a sacrifice for him. His buying that from you is sacrificial love. He loves his wife. How dare you ever, ever look down upon him. So that's what has motivated my father and my grandfather. My grandfather only had a third grade education and he had to take over the family business, which was a heavily mortgaged farm, when he was 11 and he had three younger siblings and his newly widowed mother because his father was killed in a freak Saturday afternoon wrestling match and Luther had it all on him with his third grade education. Why shouldn't we respond to the call of the real entrepreneur and help those who are struggling to get ahead in life? And I believe that the, uh, the company founded by my father and grandfather will always thrive as long as it hangs on to that love of struggling people. When you are in love with your customer and your God-given opportunity to help that customer have a better life, you are in ministry. You are a true entrepreneur. Thank you for honoring my father, the most profound entrepreneur of all. I'm not an entrepreneur. but I have observed the greatest of them and that has changed our company and it's changed small town America in many ways and I thank God for my blessings of being positioned to do that by my family, my church, my community, fellow Kentuckians who first loved us and the Turner family loves them now and I pray always will love our fellow man, particularly those who struggle. You honor that love of fellow man here tonight. 
Thank you for being here. I am so impressed with the spirit in this room. And I pray that we all have that spark of love in us as long as God gives us life. Aren't we blessed? Thank you for blessing my father and me. Thank you. I was just sitting there thinking that we ought to review the entrepreneurial lessons we've learned tonight. We learned from Brian that while you have to write a business plan, once you start, it doesn't mean very much. <laughs> Those of you who have started companies know that's very, very often the case. I think it was uh, Mike Tyson who said, everybody has a plan until they get punched in the mouth, right? <laughs> we learned from Pat, that it's possible to start a business without capital, employees, space, just a good idea, and the cleverness to get people to lend you what they, what they have. That's a great entrepreneurial story. We learned from Randy and Cal the importance of faith and family. I, that really seems like a theme tonight, something that I've heard and I appreciate hearing from those guys. And importantly, we heard from Cal that you never ask Aunt Ethel what size underwear she wears. <laughs> Like you to ask, I'd like to ask you to join me again to thank our presenting sponsor, J.P. Morgan Chase, our platinum sponsor.